Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to Office Hours with Michael Kitsis. So for today's Office Hours, I, I want to talk about advisor technology and, and specifically for those who have maybe not adopted so much technology in their firm about what they should be adopting or at least what they should be adopting first. Because one of the questions I hear a lot, particularly from solo advisors who are either entirely on their own or maybe have uh, one or two staff members supporting them, is that they're already so busy in their own firms and haven't adopted much technology in the past and now don't even know what to try to adopt and to focus on first. As uh, Unfortunately, uh, 10 years ago, the primary criticism for both independent RIAs and, and even independent broker-dealers was that there just weren't many technology choices now, arguably, the problem is that there are so many technology choices, it can be overwhelming to try to figure out what to use in, in each category, much less which category to adopt and, and tackle and try to dig into first. And so I thought for uh, today's discussion, it would be good just to talk about uh, you know, what technology really matters or not, especially in a solo advisor's firm, which, as it turns out, depends in no small part on, on what your vision is for your advisory firm in the first place. Because the, the first question you really need to ask when you're trying to figure out what technology to adopt is what kind of firm you're trying to create for yourself in the first place. So at, at a high level, I break this into two categories, practices and businesses. A practice is something that's built around you as the advisor and, and, the, uh, and the founder or owner. The, the capacity of the business is your personal capacity to serve your clients. And, and while you might grow by hiring a staff member or two over time, eventually you're going to get to the maximum number of clients you can handle. You're going to stop growing and you're just going to enjoy the lifestyle and the really good income that you can generate as a solo successful practice. By contrast, an advisory business is something that's meant to grow beyond just you as the advisor and your personal capacity to serve clients. It's a firm where you anticipate having multiple advisors, possibly multiple partners someday. It also means you're ultimately going to have a lot more staff because you need more staff and infrastructure if you're going to have a lot more advisors and clients. If it's only ever meant to be you, you usually will never need more than one or two staff members the most. Now, this, this distinction is necessarily about like income or financial wherewithal to buy you know, fancy technology versus cheaper technology as industry benchmarking studies show the most successful solo advisory firms take home as much income as the partners in AUM firms, the billion dollars of assets under management. The reason why this distinction matters is that growing firms have to focus on scalability and managing this ever growing infrastructure, which means their technology choices tend to focus on what, what can it best accomplish that scalability goal. By contrast, practices built around successful lifestyles and maximizing income are much more focused around personal efficiency of the advisor, what, what saves us time or, or the need to hire another support staff member. But you don't need to scale across multiple advisors and a dozen staff, nor do you plan to. You just want to incrementally save a little more over time over time, and that changes the technology that you want to use. So all that being said, if, you, if you're a growing advisory business, where should you ato uh, adopt first? To me, the answer here is pretty straightforward. You need to implement a good advisor CRM solution first. Because in a growing advisory firm, and, and any sizable advisory firm, CRM is the core, it's the hub, it's the foundation of the entire business. Not just to keep track of all the client names and contact information like a giant Rolodex, the, the way that people use CRM in the past, but to track tasks and activities and entire workflows to make sure that all the steps for servicing clients are being done properly. When you're an individual advisor on your own, CRM may be helpful just to keep track of everything that you're doing. But if you're really organized around your own tasks and activities, you may, you may not need much of a CRM. Or if you do, it, it basically is just a big Rolodex tracking key client information and maybe notes about client meetings and phone calls. But if you're a growing business, once you hire your first staff member, suddenly CRM becomes much more important. Because it's possible now that your, your staff member is going to take a call from a client when you're not there. And that staff member or client service manager or assistant, whoever it is, needs to know what was said to the client last to understand the context of the call, and suddenly CRM becomes more important. Now, often when it's just an advisor and, and an assistant, there's enough communication that CRM may not be crucial, because you tend to have a lot of conversations about the clients anyways, right? I could just say to my assistant, hey, uh, Betty just called the office today. She's wondering the status of her account transfer, and, and now my assistant knows that Betty calls tomorrow. That's probably what it's going to be about. But the moment you add a second staff member, and there are now three of you, and there's this triangle of communication, all the potential for complexity begins to amplify. 
Because the odds now dramatically increase that someone's going to have a conversation with a client that neither of the other two staff members were privy to. And tasks on behalf of clients are now going to start crisscrossing on all three people, which really increases the risk that a, a ball gets dropped along the way or something slips through the cracks with all the handoffs that have to start occurring with three people. And that's why CRM is so important for a growth-minded firm. If you know you're going to grow and add staff members and eventually other advisors, you must have a real CRM system in place to keep track of not just the clients themselves, but the communication to clients that happens from multiple staff member sources and, and all the tasks on behalf of clients that get handed off across multiple team members. For independent advisors, you have a few good choices in CRM. The, the most common for solos is either Wealthbox or Redtail, with some uh, very financial planning-centric and pasta-centric firms also using Juncture. Uh, you may hear a lot about Salesforce, but frankly, Salesforce is fairly expensive for a solo advisory firm, at least compared to the others, and, and often requires a lot more customization, or at least industry-specialized, what are called overlay systems and templates like Accelerator, Skyance, or uh, Salesforce's own financial services cloud to really make Salesforce work. So with larger advisory firms that have a couple million dollars of revenue or more, Salesforce is very popular, rapidly gaining market share because all those customization and, and integration capabilities are worthwhile and cost-effective to invest in at their size. For most solo advisory firms, even growth-minded, I think Wealthbox or Redtail are better places to start, and you can decide down the road if you're going to do a, a CRM migration five years down. Once you have CRM in place... Realistically, as a growing advisory business, you're also going to want to round up the rest of your advisor tech stack, which means getting a financial planning software solution and a portfolio management solution, that either has rebalancing tools built in or a separate rebalancing platform. Those three are really the core stack, and virtually every large growing firm has to put all of them in place eventually. But the starting point is CRM. That's the foundation. That's the core of a growing advisory business. And if you are adding staff and you don't have CRM, you have to get there. That is the priority. When it comes to lifestyle practices, on the other hand, the best technology to adopt isn't so straightforward because it really depends on the size and nature and the focus of the firm. If you have a staff member, or especially if you have two staff members, CRM still becomes the must-have once again. And, and most popular options are still the same Wealthbox or Redtail choices because uh, Salesforce is overkill here. I think you'll just find it cuts down on how often you have to repeat communication of the clients of this or that to your team members or... or how often something accidentally slips through the cracks for a client. Now, if you have a staff member that works by your side all the time, though, or especially if it's just you, I know this is kind of blasphemy for the industry, but the truth is you don't necessarily need a CRM system. You do absolutely need some place that you capture key client information, uh, names, addresses, phone numbers, emails, and, and you need to capture client notes as well. But if you just have a dozen or a few clients and you only ever plan to have that many and you aren't looking to grow and add a lot more clients and staff and you already know them well... You may not need a CRM. You'll have to judge for yourself if you're good at just remembering and being organized enough to file folders for clients and in each folder have a Word doc that has key client information and notes, one for each client. It's not the most beautifully efficient system, but if it's just you and you're building around yourself, it is feasible. And I know a lot of advisors that have done this successfully without trouble. In fact, because lifestyle practices are, are so a reflection of the individual advisor and what they do, Really, the best technology for you if you're in a lifestyle practice is whatever solves a pain point for you. So if you do struggle with keeping it all organized, CRM is a great system to adopt, even if you're solo uh, and a lot of those solutions like a wealth box and Redtail are very affordable. If you're good at keeping track of clients, but you don't like how much time it takes to trade and implement their portfolios, look at rebalancing software. There are some low-cost solutions for solo firms, including Red Black and the, the free version of iReval if you use TD Meritrade that can save you dozens of hours every year in time just to trade and monitor client portfolios. And if you really value your time at $200 or more as a professional advisor, you, you basically only need to save one hour per month to get a good return on investment for rebalancing software. Similarly, if you're finding like it takes a lot of time to produce your financial plans because you do it mostly by hand with Word docs and Excel spreadsheets, look at some of the various financial planning software solutions. The most popular right now are eMoney Advisor, Money Guide Pro, and the, the hot newcomer, Right Capital. And again, if it saves you just an hour to a month in plan creation or, or plan updates for clients, you're generating a positive ROI on the software. Alternatively, you might just invest to get some software that, that's better at, at something specialized for you. Maybe it's a, a social security analysis tool because you work a lot with retirees. Maybe it's 
um, risk tolerance software like Riskalyzer, a stress testing tool like Hidden Levers to get better at talking to clients and prospects about risk in their portfolio. Maybe you want to do more mind mapping with clients. So you want to look at an industry tool like Asset Map or a third party solution like MindMeister or MindGenius. Uh, for a lot of advisors and solo practices, though, the truth is the best technology to implement is actually not industry software. It's just personal productivity tools to make you more efficient. Maybe that's uh, using Slack as a communication tool with your assistant to cut down the number of emails. Maybe that's uh, scheduling software so that clients can set up meetings and calls directly on your calendar with all that back and forth emails that uh, you know, advisor tech guru Bill Winterberg calls the battleship game where, you know, can you do Tuesday at three? No. Can you do Wednesday at four? All that back and forth. Uh, maybe you want to use Buffer to queue up your social media sharing or Evernote just to keep track of your client notes efficiently or Phrase Express just to cut down the time it takes to type repetitive emails with the same phrases over and over again. I, as I've written in the past, I'll spend $100 a year on software that saves me literally just one minute a day in any kind of routine task. Because one minute a day for every working day is 20 minutes a month. 20 minutes a month is four hours a year, which means every $200 I spend on technology, I get a whole eight-hour day back in my year. Wouldn't you like an extra day off for $200 of software? The, the key point, though, is just that when you're a solo advisor in a lifestyle practice, it's not about what software gives you more scalability or profitability ne necessarily. It's about what software makes you personally more time efficient, more productive, and more able to enjoy some of that lifestyle time you tried to create for yourself. So figure out whatever it is that takes you time that you do repeatedly. Repeatedly is the key because that's where you can find technology that may cut out a few hours, even just a few minutes out or potentially automated away altogether and create that real-time savings. So I mean, it. I, sit down, make a list of the things that you're doing from day to day and week to week that are repeated and look at that list and figure out which ones are the most time-consuming or at least just the most aggravating for you and find technology to help with that first. Particularly as a solo advisory firm that's focused on lifestyle, that's going to be your best ROI. Now, the one other thing to bear in mind, if you're a solo advisor that struggles with this, because maybe you are not so tech savvy in the first place, which is why you haven't adopted a lot of these tools to begin with, you don't have to go at it alone. There are consultants out there who work with solo advisors that can help implement technology tools in your practice. It's folks like uh, Jennifer Goldman at Goldman Consulting, Kristen Schmidt at RI Oasis, Dan Kellermeyer at New Heights Solutions, are available to be hired to help you confirm you're buying the right technology, given you know, the huge number of choices available to advisors today, and help you to actually implement it in your firm. So if you're not a technology person, it's okay. Just get some help. You'd be amazed how much more efficient your practice can be, either to save you time in the business or to better scale it with just a little bit of help to implement technology and make sure it's done right. But I hope that helps as a little bit of food for thought about where to start if that's where you're stuck. This is Off Hours with Michael Kitsis, normally 1 p.m. East Coast time on Tuesdays. Obviously, we're a little later this week, but thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great day.